let's start with the idea in baseball that Aaron Judge might be colluded against, that the Players Association is now basically, it feels like, Dave, I'm not missing this, right? I'm not misunderstanding this. They're already throwing out there, the money's not high enough for Judge, uh, there's collusion going on. They're not saying it like that, but that's what they're saying, correct? Oh, they're saying it exactly like that. They're say, what, what, here's what's happening. And, and we talked about, I think on this show, but certainly on Nothing Personal, Steve Cohn does not want to sign Aaron Judge away from the Yankees because of what Hal Steinbrenner's role was in Steve Cohn buying the Mets. And that is a very normal thing. When you buy a team, you've got to get the votes. And Steve Cohn was a very controversial figure. And having Hal Steinbrenner in his corner as they were trying to get to 23 votes to approve his transaction, that became important. And was there a discussion that, hey, let's operate as Yankees and Mets in the same market? We are going to try to catch you. We're going to raise our payroll. You know that, Hal. We're going to try to win World Series. Let's meet in the World Series if we can every year. But I'm not going to take your guys. You're not going to take my guys. Wink, wink. Is it possible that happened? Of course. Why would Steve Cohn take Aaron Judge away from the Yankees and incur the wrath of Steinbrenner? You're always counting votes when you're an owner. You're always making sure that you don't have more than seven enemies. What? So baseball always gets involved in this. And they say to the owners, don't talk like that because we're going to get charged with collusion and we're going to have to pay money to settle the grievance. But on the other side of their mouth, they're saying, don't overpay for players. So all of this crazy stuff that's being reported, Dan, it's all much ado about nothing. There is no collusion that goes on. There is conversation that goes on. And the Players Association pretends it's collusion, but it's not. But wouldn't that be collusion, though, if two owners basically say, we're not going to compete fairly? And also, what is the statute of limitations on that? When, like, in 12 years' time, will Steve Cohen be able to sign a Yankee? Or is it five years? How, how long is this sort of uh, tr truce agreement? Yeah, so it's not it's not an actual written agreement where they say as part of the purchase agreement where it's signed by both parties and witnessed that we're not going to sign each other's Oh, players. knock it off. That, they would never leave a paper trail. Of like that's course. not there's not going to be a paper trail on collusion, but you're kind of describing something that has the the circumstantial evidence around it that feels like collusion. If Aaron Judge doesn't get an enormous contract and it's Something that we see reported again and again that the Mets and the Yankees uh, are in business together like that. What is that? These these teams are all in business together. That's the that's what baseball is. That's what all leagues are. All owners are in business together. But let's talk about statute of limitations on collusion or on what you call an enormous contract. Aaron Judge is going to get an enormous contract from a team and it will likely be the Yankees. It was always going to be the Yankees. He is going to get more than the $213 million that he was offered last year's spring training. And this is an example of Scott Boris and other owner and other agents and Tony Clark, who's heads the union, taking care of the top of their market. The irony is they don't give one rat's ass about all the minor league players who they now represent, all the mid-level free agents, all the young guys. They take care of the top, and that's what they protect only. And we take advantage of that fact and we get better CBAs because most of the cash that teams spend is on the bottom. It's on operations. It's on filler players. So when we get better deals on those types of players, that makes owners happy. So the, the, the players union is just terrible. They really are. Are they? They're protecting yeah, the players because a lot of people would say the owner's union that's not called an owner's union, but you just described Cohen and Steinbrenner making a union, that that's pretty terrible, too. The owner's union? I don't understand. What, what is an owner's They're union? They're united. That Cohen oh, yeah. and Steinbrenner are united. They're united yeah. in New York on not competing to raise the salary of Aaron Judge. No, that's not what they're united on. So you, you misspoke already. It's not saying don't sign him. It's saying you're still going to pay him a lot of money, but we're not going to pay a dollar more and take him. But David, but David, we're talking. That doesn't mean the Giants won't. 
I know, but David, we're talking about the owner's collective interest. Whether or not you want to specifically refer to it as a union, their collective interest is not always in the eyes of fans in the best interest of the game, or obviously due to their agreement with the players in the best interest of the players. And so Dan is assessing a value judgment on the collective interest of the owners, which in my view and in the view of a lot of people is not always the best for the game. Because it's best for the game if Aaron Judge goes to the Mets for three hundred and fifty-two million instead of three hundred and forty-nine. It's best if everyone Yankees. competes. It's best if everyone competes. Yes, everyone does compete, but not everyone can compete on the same. But play except for when the New York Mets owner has got to get a vote and he's got to get twenty-three votes, so we're not going to compete in this instance. Oh my God, that never happens anywhere else but baseball. You're totally right. My bad. People in the same industry never talk and get together about what's in the best interest of the industry and how to make sure an industry stays healthy, for sure. There's no conferences that people go to. Well, they, they're not allowed to anymore in certain companies, but there's no conferences that people go to in industries for best practices and figuring out the best ways to make more money. That never happens. This seems like sarcasm. <laughs> I'm back. <It's, laughs> all of these industries do it. And what you're trying to protect, yes. By the way, do you think the airline industries don't talk to each other? Do you think like the the people who run United and the people who run American, they're doing it in a silo? Well, we don't know what David. The what are you? What are you? What are you doing? You've been complaining about contracts in that sport since you thought that each hero's hundred million dollar deal was going to be the ruination of that sport. Clearly, these owners have plenty of money to share with the players. The idea that the Mets and the Yankees might have a wink, wink agreement on keeping down Aaron Judge's salary—that's not what the wink, wink is, Dan. The wink, wink is, hey, we're not going to take Judge from you. That doesn't mean that his salary is going to be held down. That doesn't mean the Yankees can all of a sudden offer Aaron Judge $220 million and say, thanks for the 62 home runs. We'll give you a $7 million VIG because Steve Cohn's not going to bid for Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge's money is not being held down by that. But if in theory the vote to get uh, Steve Cohen in the into Major League Baseball was orchestrated by Bruce Sherman instead of Hal Steinbrenner, then maybe Steve Cohen would go and compete with Hal Steinbrenner in a real way for this signing, and thus uh, the, his dollar amount would go up because there would be a genuine competitor to the New York Yankees to sign Aaron Judge at a higher number. It's just amazing that you're willing to give this much attention to the Aaron Judge, who is a unicorn of a player, right? The union is not made up of Aaron Judge's. So you're trying so hard to protect the right of Aaron Judge to make the most money he can. It's so beautiful the way you all are because that's how we take advantage of it because you're totally ignoring the majority of the people. I don't, I don't even know. How, how can you explain your desire to make sure Aaron Judge gets the extra million and not give a flying crap about the other 400 it's players? Not, it's not that, David. Yeah. It's that precedent-setting salary numbers, I'm going to side with labor and not management. Management's making plenty of money, even I, though management has done a pretty great job of fucking up that sport at every turn. I can also walk and chew gum at the same time. I can... I mean, I, I really don't care about Aaron Judge's salary. He's going to make a shed load of money one way or another. I care in the overall about these teams' desire to compete. And so if on the lower end they're not spending as much either, I actually do think that merits more attention. Why can't, why can't I argue on behalf of both of those things?